Do you think that this signals an early election? Would Labour be ready for one? Yeah, I mean, it's the worst kept secret in Parliament, isn't it, that uh, we're likely to be heading for a May budget, for a May election, and uh, this budget date seems to, seems to confirm it. Is Labour's response bring it on, or, or would you rather more time to prepare? Yeah, no, for heaven's sake. The whole country's response is bring it on, isn't it? I mean, the country's desperate for an election. I mean, we really got to get rid of this lot, and we want to have an opportunity to do so. That's what people tell me. Just finally on this topic before we move on to uh, the topic of international fraud, which I know you're on for, if the, the, the budget comes along, will Labour largely just back what, what the government announced and try not to, to drive a wedge between the two economic policies, which is somewhat what happened after the autumn statement? I have to say that you know, reading some of this briefing that's been going on over the last few days kind of says it all. You know, it's all about, oh, we're going to set a trap for Labour. We're going to do this. We're going to, we're going to, tra you know, the trailing that they're going to have this tax cut and that tax cut. And, and uh, what will Labour do in response? You know, there was a time when governments governed and actually made the right decision for the sake of the country. And their first response was not what's best for the Tory party. What red meat can we give to our backbenchers to stop them rebelling? Or in what way can we embarrass the Labour Party? Frankly, it's about time that we had a government that was prepared to govern, that was going to make difficult decisions, but was going to make those decisions on behalf of the country and look after all of us and get this country going in the right direction. Let's uh, talk, if we can, uh, Mr. Hombre, about uh, the main reason you, you came on today, which is this uh, advance fee fraud. Yes. Uh, and you've been doing some analysis on, on the numbers, and a huge amount of this does take place, but it, it actually starts from abroad, even though it's UK consumers that are bearing the brunt of it. So advanced fee fraud is you know, when people get in touch with you in various ways and they say, give us some money and we will, you know, give you some services or give you some goods or deliver a parcel for you or, you know, our relationship will get much better if I can just come and see you, help me to come over to the country. That's advanced fee fraud. And at the moment, it's gone up so fast, so quickly, that it's now one in 20 of all crimes as these advanced fee frauds. I mean, it's extraordinary. And so many people have been the victims of it. And three quarters of it take place from abroad. So the question is what to do next. And what we've been saying is that there are a number of technical things that you can do. So quite often there will be um, factories that are just producing these text messages and really high volumes of them coming out of one address. And they can be targeted and they can be closed down and they haven't been. Or you'll get you know, mass phoning happening from, again, particular addresses, particular telephone numbers. You, people can, can actually buy British telephone numbers from abroad and use those phone numbers numbers in order to, to trick people into believing that it's a phone call coming from the UK when actually it's coming from somewhere else. Those technical things can be done. And we've been calling on the government to do it for a very long time. The government say they're going to and they're not. So we continue to challenge them on that. And then there's this. We are in, a, I think, the 12th round of negotiations with the Indians to set up a trade deal. And trade deals can cover a number of things. And one of the things we're, I've been saying for months to this government is, as part of the trade deal, talk to the Indians about ensuring that we can work with them when it comes to law enforcement. Because there are buildings, there are large employers who are employing fraudsters who are targeting Britain for, uh, when it comes to these advanced fee frauds and a number of other things. And we need to work with the Indians to close them down because, frankly, you know, we are being subjected to a barrage of fraudulent opportunists who are trying to, to take our money. You know, get hold of your card details. Say, you know, you get a, you get a message from Royal Mail saying, you know, oh, we, we failed to, to deliver your parcel. That's going to, if you want to get it delivered again, we're quite happy to deliver it at a time you want, but it'll cost £2.50. Give us your card details. Takes a moment. You give the card details, and then you go, oh, God, what have I done? Are you, are you saying that most of these... Uh fraudulent opportunists are, are Indian people? No, I'm saying that a number of them are. There are these, that certainly that is one of the problem areas. There are many other countries. I mean, the other one that springs to mind, frankly, is Russia. And um, we're not likely to be doing a trade deal with them. So, you know, we can't have that opportunity. But what I'm saying is, 
is that fraudsters in the end will keep changing their tactics. They are very nimble on their feet, and our government is not. And there are a number of things that we need to do, but we need to keep topping it up. We need to keep chopping and changing, just like they do, in order to protect the public. Because at the moment, believe it or not, 40% of crime in the UK is fraud. And the amount of money that we as a country lose and all the different types of fraud is the equivalent to the amount of money we spend on the National Health Service plus another quarter. This really should be more of an issue than it is. And we need to tackle this government. We need to challenge this government and say, really, your response is inadequate. You need to protect us better than you do. But, but India is as bad an offender as Russia uh, when it comes to cyber fraud facing British people. Is, is that the implication? that it is one of the top countries when it comes to cyber fraud. Um, and, and the point is, is that everybody knows that, and, but we need to do something about it, and we should have an agreement with the Indians to tackle it. That's the point. You know, and, the, and the trade deal is a really good opportunity um, to tackle it. You know, so much of crime is now, is now international. I mean, you know, look at the small boats coming over. You know, that is international crime. You have to work with other countries in order to be able to tackle these issues. So, yes, that's, uh, so that, that's the point. Is that this is an opportunity to work with the Indians for the sake of all of us to close these people. Down. Um, ju just finally, um, uh, uh, Mr. Nombre, I wanted to ask you about uh, uh, the situation in, in the Middle East. And uh, I'm sure you saw yesterday comments from President Erdogan. He likened Prime Minister Netanyahu to Adolf His Hitler. What, what's Labour's response to that? We think that we need to have a ceasefire that is sustainable. We need to have a, an end to the violence. And we need to make sure that we get proper assistance going into the Palestinians. The action of the Israelis needs to be proportionate. And we are really concerned about the number of, really concerned about the number of civilians who are being killed. We cannot have in the middle and the south of Gaza the same destruction that we saw in the north of, of, the, north of the Gaza Strip. I mean, it's just... It's, it's appalling. And so we are really pleased that the UN passed the resolution that it did. But we do say that the Israelis need to think very carefully about the action that they're taking and the way in which they're going about it. Yes, of course they need to defend themselves. Yes, of course they need to get their hostages back. And they need to... I mean, Hamas has to go. But we are really concerned to see the level of deaths that is happening at the moment. Really you're, concerned. You're happy to, to let the direct comparison, not just the comparison, uh, saying that uh, Netanyahu was like Adolf Hitler. You're happy to let that stand? I never think. I think that, that what Adolf Hitler was responsible for has a unique place in hell. The same with the Nazis. I don't ever think that it is appropriate to draw any comparisons at all. I just think that this is... They, they stand alone in the level of evil that they were responsible for. It's not right to, com to call people Nazis. It's not right to compare them with Adolf Hitler. But, I, but if you ask me about Gaza and you ask me what Labour's position is, we are really concerned about the level of death that's happening at the moment in Gaza and the number of civilians that are being killed.